So I took advantage of the cool morning this morning and I moved a few yards away from the field edges and I'm tucking them in along the escarpment here, along some sheltered areas. Uh, you can see this is one of our fields, uh, nicely harvested. So the guys aren't going to be touching this. I'm going to be using this yard here to stage some honeybees uh, until uh, we move them in for winter. I just want to show you what I'm seeing. I've been uh, kind of talking a little bit recently about my hive shutting down early. Um, it's really got me concerned. Uh, and the reason for it, um, I'm not exactly sure, probably because my honey flow ended really early this summer and it's probably just that shortage of natural um, nourishment coming into that hive and keeping that queen going. I've been feeding supplements and sugar syrup just to keep these guys going. Um, and it's having some effect, I do believe, but not a lot. Um, and I've had some comment about, uh, well, I'm managing my units in smaller boxes and singles. Uh, um, if I double up my equipment, it'd provide more natural resource for these bees and maybe they'd be creating a bigger brood nest. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to dig down into a single unit or a couple single units <clears throat> and then dig into one of my double units. And if the train of thought holds true, where those doubles hold more nourishment, then, you know, they should be brooding still, right? Okay, so I just moved these hives in from a field edge. Uh, so they're just a little bit worked up a little bit. I have some smoke, but still, yeah, still working. We'll just dig down very briefly to see what's going on in this nest. So we got a nice big box of bees here. And I have some supplement there just finishing up. So I'll just dig down into the nest. And I'll just tell you what I'm seeing. Got a nice herb of honey here. Open cells. And fresh nectar brought in. Looks like there's some alfalfa honey that was brought in there. <clears throat> Frame number two, empty cells, looks like the brood had emerged in this frame. Honey around the outside, fresh nectar coming in. I'm not seeing a lot of pollen in this colony. There's some cap brood. It's more cap brood. Cells. Lots of bees. Some eggs. So she's queen, right? I'm not seeing all stages of brood in this colony. The, she's shut down quite a while ago. Nicely rimmed with honey and fresh nectar coming in. Some capped brood. Some more capped brood on this side emerging. And a few eggs. There's not a lot of pollen in this colony. Nice frame of honey. Very nice. Lots of bees. Got a bit of pollen. Not a lot of pollen. So this colony has shut down for winter. There's not much for pollen stores, which is a concern.
they've been supplemented and they've been open fed. I'm just going to go into one of my doubles here. going on top box is right full of honey she is right full of honey <laughs> this colony has a little more honey down below here as well Fresh nectar coming in by the looks of it. A little bit of pollen here. So this colony obviously has a little more pollen stored than the, the, uh, the single box. Brood hatching out, open cells. Sides all open. Here's a frame of emerging brood. Nothing fresh going on. Same on this side. Frame, empty frame, a little bit of pollen. This colony has more pollen. This side's completely empty. They're backfilling this side. This, frame, this colony has, I would say, probably, let's see here. So this one. Backfilling. Filling. So this, the bottom, this colony probably has, and here's a frame of honey, probably has half a frame of pollen, whereas that single didn't. That single didn't have any pollen. But the amount of brood rearing is absolutely no different. Actually, that single probably has a little bit more brood rearing going on. But for argument's sake, I'd say both. Brood nests look identical, other than this one having started backfilling already, and probably half a frame of pollen. That single box back there, and very little pollen, just a little bit. And just take a peek up top to see if there's any. Let's see what's going up here. Top box is plugged full of honey. I'm just going to pull a center frame here just to see what's on it. A little bit of brood hatching out, rimmed with honey. Side is empty. The difference between this nest and my singles, this one has a little bit more pollen, not a lot. My singles have very little pollen in them. The queens have shut down and both of them looks like exactly at the same time. Uh, they both have adequate amount of honey on hand. Uh, they're both backfilling a little bit, getting ready for winter. Uh, the double has a little more pollen on hand. 
than the single box, which has got me concerned. And I'll likely see that uh, later on in winter, where these guys uh, will likely be using that pollen, whereas the singles don't have any availability ability to it until the fresh stuff starts coming in. This yard come from a field edge. Um, it run onto a late field of canola. Uh, we got a little bit of honey off that, and there was pollen coming in at that time. Um, and after that bloom, there's just not a lot around. Uh, I may have made a mistake by leaving them out in that location uh, as long as I did. Maybe I should have moved out uh, two weeks ago. Uh, it's in an area the municipality sprays their ditches a lot. It seems like they spray the ditches twice in the year, so there's nothing living in the ditches. The farmers do a really good job at, uh, you know, utilizing the acreage they have available to them. So there isn't a lot of wetland, not a lot of uh, native area around for natural bloom. There isn't a lot of pasture in that area. And I'm seeing this in my brood nest right now with availability of pollen uh, to these bees. Uh, this yard, I think this yard is shut down a little bit, a little bit earlier than the rest of my apiary. Uh, and I'm blaming that. I'm blaming the lack of pollen availability to my hives. So a lot of what we do is, seems like it's reactionary. Uh, as we see these conditions influence our hives. So we're usually like two or three weeks late on what's going on. I'm just trying to show uh, what we do is directly connected to what everybody else does and directly connected to uh, nature itself. We have a line on nature which we thrive on, unlike anybody else in the agricultural industry. We have what happens within our our natural environment here whatever happens within our area of beekeeping directly is influenced into these colonies it depends on how healthy these colonies are depends on how productive these colonies can be and it depends on what we can actually do as beekeepers to manage these hives so as some of these conditions start changing on us as we notice uh, certain things um, changing that influence the environment, the local environment and everything living within, within it, we see that direct response within our hives. We have to preserve our lands, we have to preserve our natural spaces, we have to preserve other things that want to exist within our countryside. So we have to acknowledge that and simply make the effort to be able to reinstate some of these natural places, maybe preserve some of these natural places, or promote, uh, just promote the diversity that's needed for other things to live. At any rate, that's a little bit of a rant that I just continue on and on about, because when I walk into a yard like this, that has been around intensive agriculture where there isn't any natural places allowed to exist, I see the direct result of it within my hives. And this yard obviously has very little pollen stores because there was very little diversity around. Uh, they shut down earlier than the rest of my apiary and I'm probably gonna see a negative effect of that uh, as they get through winter. Hopefully we have a nice winter which will allow these guys to sail through all the same. I am a grain farmer and I love every aspect about it. A clean field makes me happy but I also love my bees. And because of that, it has forced my perspective uh, to open up a little bit and to acknowledge we're gonna keep our fields clean and we're gonna keep our fields productive around the outsides, around the margins. We need to keep a little bit of other things growing to provide a place for the diversity to flourish just so my bees can survive.